Hey guys, Ewan here, so I have a couple of things to talk about in this video and let's start with the Niagara Falls bodybuilding show. It's actually not exactly bodybuilding because there is no open division. We only have classic 212 and bikini and right here you're watching the classic physique division and this is Terence Ruffin or so-called Ruff Diesel who is most likely winning this show. Here in this back double bicep pose you can see that he actually resembles Ronnie Coleman, kind of, mini Ronnie Coleman. Basically mainly because of the glutes and his back seems pretty thick as well. And uh, overall, I mean, he's very complete from the back. From the front, he's also very good, but there is one flaw that I want to point and I'm going to show you later. But as for now, in this shot right here, he looks really good and uh, based on everything, he seems like a winner. I'm sure you all heard so many times before that Classic Physique is a waste contest and this guy has no waste pretty much. Look at his waist, it's so small. And those legs are actually very developed, uh, not too big, big, very, very big. I mean, you can look at them and you admire them because they are looking very developed, pretty huge, right? But even though they are huge, they don't throw away his balance. He's very balanced overall. The small waist combined with very symmetrical abs really creates a nice illusion. So I like his physique pretty much. Greg Doucette is also doing this show. I think that's him uh, on the right side. I'm not sure, but I have a couple of shots of him also. I will show you them later. Um, here you can see their favorite classic physique pose and the guy on the right here in the middle is also looking pretty good that's a pretty good uh, vacuum but Terence is actually having an amazing vacuum as well you're gonna see that in a second as far as his favorite classic physique pose I mean it's a sort of a variation of a side tricep I would say front tricep and it looks really aesthetic like really aesthetic those uh, quads are looking amazing the cows could be bigger but uh, they're not bad uh, the arms look very good, I mean the triceps are looking pretty well developed and uh, very complete, very symmetrical, shoulders are there, chest is very good, abs and small waist, very, very good classic physique, this guy is the future, really, he's gonna be probably, I mean, right now he's not on that level exactly to challenge guys like Chris Bumstead and Brian Ainsley and the others, but you know, without Keon Pearson, without George Peterson who moved to 212, uh, he will probably be one of the top guys in the future because he has the potential, really. It's gonna be just time. Here you can see his vacuum. I'd say this vacuum is the last nail in the coffin. I think he won the show with this one. Um, it's a really good vacuum, uh, really broad rib cage, small waist once again, great quads. Um, his arms though and his lats and V-taper, that's the main problem that I have with him. Not in this lineup though. Nobody here. This Korean guy on the left, I don't know his name. I didn't do my homework. I don't know his name, what, what it is. If you guys know, let me know. But basically, I don't think this guy is going to challenge him, nor the guy on the right or anybody else in this lineup. I'm pretty sure Terence Ruff and Ruff Diesel is winning this show. Um, here you can see that his arms and his with taper is probably the best on this stage. But for the Mr. Olympia level, not that good. He should improve on that. I'm going to talk about that in a second as well. Now let's go with... Uh, Another just side tricep shot and here you can see that he has very broad shoulders, very well developed chest, small waist, great abs, everything is just spot on, very good classic physique. Here you can see some of his gym shots and I'm sure most of you heard about him but if you didn't you can see who he actually is off the stage and here you can see that he looks really good, like really good. Look at the details in those quads, you cannot see them fully but you can see the upper part and it's very much detailed, the chest is looking broad and developed. The small waist, symmetrical abs, arms are quite decent. You can actually see his right arm right there, right bicep. It doesn't look that well. In the abs and thighs, again, aesthetics, great aesthetics. Calves, again, could be bigger. I think he would do better if his arms were a tiny bit bigger. But those abs and that overall classic physique is looking very, very impressive. And here you can see his back, and I said before that it reminds me of Ronnie Coleman, so that means it's a really good back pose. Not only back, but the glutes, the hamstrings, and the calves as well remind me of Ronnie Coleman, they're uh, kind of small. And uh, the thing that I don't like about his physique, the only flaw that I can notice, or is it like two flaws, basically the wheat taper, I would like his lats to pop a little bit more. They just seem flat, you know, waist to arm, there is no curve, it seems like a one straight line. And that's one flaw, I guess the other one, it's not really that bad, but let's say it's the, the other one, um, the biceps. I would like his biceps to be a little bit more peaky, fuller, bigger, not only biceps, but the triceps as well. They're kind of short and not really that developed. 
and the forearms. The forearms could be just the same because it's classic physics, not bodybuilding. He won't be able to have Lee Priest-like forearms if he stays in his weight class in classic physics. So, I mean, it looks very, very good. The overall classic physique, amazing potential, amazing potential, but uh, pretty much perfect bodybuilder, only those two flaws. Biceps and the lats, the lat curve, I would prefer it to be bigger. Is it a genetic thing or could he develop it more to look more impressive? I don't know. Let's hope he can actually fix this. Right here is Greg Doucette, and honestly, I'm not a subscriber of his channel. I don't really follow him anywhere. I didn't know about him before he made that Wesley Visser's video where he said that Wesley is never going to win a pro show in Classic Physique. And that really didn't make a lot of sense. He was way off, way off with that. That was just nonsensical. But uh, here he is. He's much better bodybuilder and he's an analyst based on only that one video. I don't really follow him. I heard some other things from his videos and I can see that he's a pretty knowledgeable guy. He knows his thing, but uh, he was way off with that. So if somebody says something like that, you know, it kind of throws me away. I'm probably not going to watch his videos in the future, but he, this is him. This is him. I know he has a lot of fans and a lot of subscribers, so I'm sure most of you guys watching this know about him. So if you want to see him, this is him right here on his show. And he looks good. Once again, he is much better bodybuilder than he is an analyst, but uh, he looks very good here. He's very conditioned. You can see his hamstrings and glutes looking pretty good. The lower lats are there and overall very good physique but he's probably not going to be better than like top five top six maybe uh, he has no chance of beating terence ruffin i don't know i'm not really sure i didn't really see him posing next to the other guy this is just based on the couple of shots that i got here that were sent to me by one of my subscribers so based on this i mean he looks good he looks pretty good probably like top five top six good luck to him as I said, there is no open, but there is 212, which is the closest thing to the open. And here you can see the top two, apparently. Here you can see Hyun Jin Kim. I probably butchered his name. He's Korean and he looks bloody amazing. And uh, Guy Cisternino. Last time Guy competed, it was, I believe, Legion Sports Festival, and he didn't place at all the way he wanted. I think he was like out of top six or something. Remind me, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently this show, he's top two. Yeah, I know Guy is not even flexing here, he's not hitting the pose, but Kim is looking amazing and I wanted to show you this photo that I got because this guy is looking really good. Who is going to win this show easily? Here you can see them from the back and uh, from the back it's a much worse story for Guy as far as beating Kim and winning the show, but when it comes to placing second, I think he will do it and he will place second in the show. But it's overall not super impressive showing of Guy Cisternino, it seems like he is falling like just like Niagara Falls uh, in his bodybuilding career he's not getting any better he's not getting any younger and uh, will he come back eventually and you know he had a couple of injuries I'm not really sure what kind of injuries were they but he was off of competing and training and everything so he came back he looks good he looks I don't know if he looks better than before but he's not doing that well I mean, this is a small show it's a pro show sure so, what do you guys think about Guy? Do you think he should just keep competing? Maybe he should retire? He probably won't retire. He's too stubborn to do that. And he's doing well. I mean, top 2 at a pro show. It's not, it's not bad. But it's not great either. Alright, enough about Niagara Falls pro show. What do you guys think who's gonna win it? Tell me down below. But you remember yesterday I posted this photo of Phil Heath and I did sort of an analysis, 8 minutes long, about this photo right here. And uh, based on this photo, I concluded that he lost a lot of his gains. And it seems like it. If you take a look at this shot, he looks skinny. He looks rather skinny for his standards. But today we got a lot of shots and he doesn't look skinny anymore. Just take a look at his arm and his forearm right here, standing next to the top three finisher, the Mr. Olympia, Heidi Chopin, and uh, their trainer right here, their coach, uh, Honey Rambot. Oh my god, it's so it's so hard to, to, to focus to say Honey Rambot, Heidi Chopin, and Hide Yamagishi. God. Even Phil has H in his name, but that's not the problem. So Phil right here looks amazing. He looks full. He looks big. That arm looks... Pfft. He's dwarfing Hari right here. He's absolutely dwarfing him. I mean, not just the angle. Yeah, he's got the angle probably. But the overall thickness of his physique. If you take a look at his uh, arms and forearms and uh, the traps area, the neck and everything. Okay, yeah, Hari is not known for having great arms. That's his biggest weakness. And overall upper body, really. Phil is just known for being full as a house, but I thought he lost a lot more gains than he actually did. I mean, right here, under this good lighting and a pretty good angle, 
he looks much bigger than I expected. He looks huge, actually. He looks 260 at least, probably even above. By the way, what do you guys think? If these guys took their clothes right now, here, right there, and if they posed in front of nine judges, like good judges, who do you think would, uh, would win? Do you think it would be Phil? Because, I don't know, he didn't compete for a long time. His stomach could be a mess still. But uh, Hari is only top 3 finisher in a very weak lineup, so... What do you guys think? Who'd win? Tell me down below. Oh yeah, we got this internet breaking photo as well. That Phil posted with Kai Green, his biggest rival of all time. And now after everything is over, Phil is talking really nicely about Kai. He's saying that he's one of the best bodybuilders he competed against, who actually pushed him, who actually created the dream killer, the, 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 the phantom that Phil Heath is, you know that if there was no Kai, Phil Heath wouldn't be counted as one of the top bodybuilders in the history of the world. So Phil is actually talking really nicely about Kai, but he can he can talk about it uh, that way because he won every single time. Kai lost. So it's not easy for Kai to talk nicely about Phil, and he's not really doing it. I mean, Kai is never really talking straight. He's always, you know, trying to sell something, trying to have fun with the audience, to later sell something, He's selling his ebooks and stuff. He doesn't really give a damn about uh, what people think about him and what the fans think about him and pretty much nothing but uh, making money and being successful in life. That's the impression that I got, at least. Phil is different. Phil is very connected with the audience. He can be a douchebag sometimes. He can be a little bit hmm, overconfident. I don't want to say the word. I don't want to say cocky because that's what people call him all the time. And, you know, he's very confident, but he has the right to be. That's the mindset that led him to be one of the greatest of all time. So who can be confident, if not him? And cocky, or whatever, arrogant. You can call him arrogant. He is. He tends to be. And Kai, on the other hand, he's probably worse. He's just a better actor. He doesn't let his emotions um, surface that easily. Phil, he's not that good at controlling his emotions. He doesn't care. He just lets it go. Kai, Kai is having a filter, a huge filter on everything. He doesn't, uh, he's very, very much reserved. He doesn't let us know his true personality. Nobody knows who Kai is actually. We do know the character, the Kai Green character that he created for the public, but what the hell do we know about his personal life? Do you know, is he married? Does he have any children? Uh, what was his childhood? I know he was in foster homes, he didn't have parents. And that's about it, that's just from Generation Iron movie. I'm sure all of you guys have no idea who Kai Green actually is. And I mean, he created this personality for the for the public, and he's never really saying anything clearly. I mean, if you want to create a, a personality that's not really you, if you don't want to express your emotions and your true self, make another different personality that actually tells things to us, not just, you know, circles around, and loses me five times in a one-minute conversation, I can get to understand anything he's saying, basically. <laughs> Anyways, these two guys are right now taking a photo after everything is done, basically. Pretty much, it seems like Phil is retired as well. Kai is obviously retired. He didn't compete for five years now. I don't think he's gonna come back ever. I hope he will, but he probably won't. He teased us too many times. He hinted, you know, that he might even do it, but... I don't trust him at all anymore. If he does it again, I'm gonna probably make a video about it. But me personally, I don't believe he'll ever come back. Now, after all the dust is settled, these guys are friends again, and they're... Not again, they never really were friends, but now they're cool. I'm sure that Phil actually likes Kai, and Kai, he must respect Phil for beating him all those years, but I don't think he likes him. I don't think he likes him at all. Kai has anger management issues. He admitted that. And he showed that to us on a stage a couple of times. And I do believe that Kai is still holding a grudge against Phil for everything that he's done to him, for killing his dream, as Phil would put it. What do you guys think? Do you think these guys actually like each other? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think there is a chance of Kai liking Phil. Phil may like Kai. I believe in that. But Kai to like Phil? No, he hates, he hates his guts. I'm pretty sure about that. Back in the day, in 2010s, early 2010s, while their rivalry was still active, still alive, I always preferred Phil. I liked his personality more, and I liked his physique more. I don't love his personality, I don't think it's super attractive, like Dorian Yates, for example, 
but I preferred him over Kai. And I always cheered for him. I always wanted him to win because he was a better bodybuilder and I was even a better person. What do you guys think? Who do you prefer more? I know Kai has more fans, but after everything that went down in the past couple of years, I think he showed his true face. And I'm sure most of you guys saw that. So what do you think? Tell me down below. By the way, Kai posted this photo and he deleted it very soon after. So why did he delete it? As you can see, they're holding uh, pff, boxing gloves right there. I'm not sure if it is photoshopped, it doesn't really look photoshopped, it's probably photoshopped though, I don't know, if you guys know let me know. And as you can see he posted this photo with a caption, what country do you want the fight to be in? So that was, <laughs> that was very interesting, and maybe he deleted it because some people thought it's gonna happen actually, that the fight is gonna happen, maybe Phil didn't like it, maybe it was photoshopped and Phil didn't like that he posted it. So he made him delete it, he actually just asked him, <laughs> I don't think he made him do it, but uh, who the hell knows what happened, uh, anyways he posted this photo, unfortunately it's not gonna happen, I would love to watch this, I would pay good money to watch this, wherever the hell it happened in the world, I would watch this, I would love it, it would be <laughs> like the best fight ever, ever, I'm sure most of you guys would love to see this, but yeah, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen, maybe, maybe, <laughs> but that's like the biggest maybe ever, no, no, it's not gonna happen, just a joke, it's just a joke, but it's a good joke, but you know what, it got my imagination going, so what I'm thinking, who would win it? What do you guys think, can you imagine this fight, who would win the fight, who would be, who would be stronger? Honestly, I don't know who has more skill, and probably the guy who had more skill in uh, martial arts would, would win it, but we don't count that out, if we say that their skill is at the same level. I think Phil would win it. I think Phil, he's, Phil is more aggressive, and you can see it on the stage. Whenever they were posing and they were <laughs> crashing their elbows and uh, had that elbow wrestle, Phil would win because he was more aggressive. In the pose down as well, he would just stand in front of high. He would basically dominate over him. So Phil has that pitbull type of heart, you know, for fights. I'm sure he would be more aggressive. He would want it more to win. He has uh, the competitive spirit, and uh, I think Phil would win the fight. What do you guys think? Also, just a quick little update of Regan Grimes, he posted this photo maybe a day ago, this is uh, before Japan Pro, that's gonna happen in probably half a day or a full day, whatever it happens, whenever I get some videos or photos, I'll make a video about it, about a Japan Pro, I will make that for sure, so guys subscribe, don't miss that out, and here is Regan Grimes once again, he looks pretty lean, well he win the show, it depends on who shows up, it depends mostly on uh, how Juan Morel comes, if some guys like Cedric show up, they will win it, but Juan Morel is doing it, who is definitely better bodybuilder than Regan, based on their previous performance and based on their pro wins. So if Juan Morel comes hard and full, or at least brings a pretty good combination of those two things, he will win the show. But it, it happens very often that Juan is either too flat or um, too full, you know, to the point where he actually becomes flat or just watery. So if that happens, he will probably not beat Regan, but in all likeliness, uh, Regan will be probably top two or top three, we'll see about that. I'm curious to see him standing next to Cody Montgomery. By the way, in case you forgot this guy, this is Steve Lorius, who I also consider one of the future best classic visit competitors, and uh, he was at the Iron Classic earlier this year, and he placed second, very controversial second place, most people, myself including, thought that he would win it, I really thought so, but uh, the judges didn't really implement the new rules before the Mr. Olympia, and the Mr. Olympia, it was obvious what kind of physiques they're looking for, and uh, if the rules were the same as they were the Mr. Olympia, this guy would win the Iron Classic, but he didn't, and uh, him is making some really good improvements this offseason, I mean, he's making a lot of gains, he's getting bigger, those arms are looking huge right here, so I'm curious what he's gonna look like once he competes at the Mr. Olympia next year, and he probably will do another show before the Mr. Olympia, I don't know which, but as soon as I find out, I'll update you, and as soon as it happens, I will show you the photos or the videos. So do not forget to subscribe to my channel, so you don't miss out on any of the Mr. Olympia, or all kinds of bodybuilding updates and uh, uploads and all kinds of bodybuilding related content, and I will leave you guys with this photo of Evan Santopani, taken by Per Bernal, arguably the best photographer in bodybuilding ever, the man who took some of the most iconic shots of bodybuilders of all time, most of his photos are black and white, this one however is not, 
Here you can admire Evans' amazing aesthetics in open bodybuilding. Just look at that right bicep right there, how full and huge it is, and the chest and everything. This guy has an amazing set of cows as well, very dominant arms, and I think he's one of the most aesthetic open bodybuilders of all time. I really love this guy. I watched him train before, and it was very motivating for me. I know I will never look like this, but I can just watch it and admire it. So I will leave you guys with this photo. Once again, guys, subscribe to my channel and uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.